heard that your personal home was being raided. And what did you think? Uh, I was in New Jersey. I got a call in the morning from somebody that's here, you know, person works. Sir, the FBI just came in. I said, what, the FBI, who? And they go, the FBI. And I said, how many people? Many, many people, sir, many, many people. And I couldn't believe it. And they wanted to do it quietly, silently. And I said, what do you mean silent? They're not silent, because I watched the way they were so horrible to so many people that you know and that I know that are good people, where they just attacked them in the house. And they wanted to do it quietly. And by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we started getting little strange calls, like from a group called The Media, if you've ever heard of them. And they said, something strange is happening at Mar-a-Lago. There are people standing at the gates with AK-47s or some kind of a very sophisticated gun. And what's happening at Mar-a-Lago? And when I heard that, I said, well, let's put out a notice that we were attacked or raided or broken in by the FBI. I was... I couldn't believe it. They wanted... They wouldn't allow your lawyers to go with them as they went through no. this entire They wouldn't facility, allow. We sent acres. lawyers to the property. So here's my question. They, but you... They did ask you to turn off your security cameras. That's right. But you didn't do it. That's right. Will you release those tapes publicly? Well, they've asked me not to do it because they feel the FBI agents might be in physical harm, in danger, because well, you've been there, is a, there is a fervor in this country. This country is so tired of this stuff. They're really... And so they... So I have not done it. You could pixel out their faces to I protect guess they their could identity. Do that. Yeah, I guess they could do that. Let I, me, just, look, I look. listened. I said, look, I don't want... I, I really believe that most of the people within the FBI, out of the top groups, uh, most of the people in the FBI, they probably voted for Trump. I don't want to have anybody hurt. But they came onto the site. They wouldn't allow any legal representation or representation. So they go into the rooms, like my bedroom, my office. They go into the rooms. Your wife's closet. Wife's closet. Your son's wife's bedroom. Room. Uh, my son's bedroom. Yeah. There's a picture of Hunter Biden and Baron Trump. Baron looks so innocent, <laughs> and Hunter doesn't look so innocent. They said his room was raided, but his wasn't. No, uh -huh. it was a terrible thing. Okay, Not so, even actually so they him. went to a magistrate. Merrick Garland has said, he came out and he said, I authorize this. Now, what's interesting is they went to a magistrate in, right here in Florida. That's right. A magistrate who had already previously recused himself from a case involving you because of he was prejudiced against you. Okay, I understand that was, mo what, months earlier. Why, then, didn't he recuse himself in this case? And then part two of this question is this. They took your passport, they took your medical records, they took your tax records, and probably the scariest part to me, and this is why a broad warrant like this to me would be dangerous, we do have a Fourth Amendment. Um, they also took, what, 500 pages of attorney-client privilege information? Did you, have you gotten that back, by the way? A lot. I don't know. I really don't know. They took yeah. a lot. I think they took my will. I found out yesterday. I said, where is it? Uh, am I in it? I think they took my will. <laughs> it could cause a lot of no problems. <laughs> no. That could cause a lot of people, uh, a lot of problems if that gets published from uh, people that won't be so happy or maybe will be very happy. <laughs> okay. But no, I think they took my will. No, it's a horrible thing. But wait a minute. But why they, they shopped, this guy? They, they shopped. shopped. They went to a magistrate that hates me, a magistrate that recused himself not long ago in another case because he hated Trump. He's a Clinton person and an Obama person. And I understand that, but he hated Trump. And for a smaller case that was less meaningful, he decided to recuse himself. For a very important case for the country, he decided that I'll take this one. Now, he didn't do it because of his hatred of Trump. I don't know why he hates me, but he hates me. Maybe he doesn't like strong military, low taxes, good education, he likes, but he hates He me. might like $6 a gallon gasoline. Well, he's got it. He's got he, it. He does That's in many places. Got. Let me, let me go through this. Before you left the White House, um, I, please explain the process. Uh, from my understanding, what I've read, you have the GSA. They pack all the boxes. Okay. Did you pack any boxes? No. They, they work together with people in the White House. I don't know how you would classify them, but GSA was involved. That's government services. They're right. fantastic people. And they packed them. And not only that, and they, they brought them in, along with people in the White House. I don't know who they are, but a lot of, there are a lot of people working in the White House. They packed them up, but not that clothing, 
massive amounts of pictures. You know, they take so many pictures every day, and they give you copies of all this stuff, and it's boxes and boxes of pictures, uh, newspaper articles, uh, tremendous, even kitchen things. You have tremendous amounts of different items, much clothing, I mean, shirts and, and everything, sports gear. So all of this stuff. Now, just to show you, there are many pictures of this stuff standing on the sidewalk outside, not in the basement, not in the basement. They're standing outside. I was going to say like Joe, but I decided not to because I want to be a very nice person. Be but listen, Sean, standing outside boxes, all these boxes, getting ready to be put by the GSA, I assume, into a truck and brought down to Palm Beach. There was nothing that was hiding. And if you look at the Presidential Records Act, this was what happens. You get together with GSA. Now, you have to understand, they, they bring it down. But NARA, and you talk, and you work, and you negotiate. I mean, they did it. It's not that old. I think in the 1970s, exactly for this. And we were having very nice discussions, no problem. And then all of a sudden, we got hit very hard by the FBI. Let's backtrack a little. In January of this year, the National Archives Record Administration, I guess they had been negotiating, or yeah. talk, they came and got 15 boxes. My understanding is that they sent you a letter thanking you and your team for their cooperation. They actually thanked us, yeah. They thanked they you. Th that's okay. Right. And then, in, so at that point, what was your involvement in the process? Did you ever... Not much of an involvement other than we had boxes. And again, many of these boxes had other things, you know, many, many newspapers, literally massive amounts of newspapers and pictures. But there were a lot of boxes for a lot of different things. But they actually wrote a letter, thank you very much for your cooperation, effectively. And we were doing that, which is exactly what we're supposed to do based on the Presidential Records Act. And, Sean, we were doing that. And we continued to do it. And then we got hit by... We got... It was is really it a break was, by the Is it because FBI. it was so voluminous, the number of, you know, papers... Well, it was... Out, you have pictures of it. Actually, yeah. you have pictures of it. Yeah. Pretty much, I think, many pictures of people. I think there were GSA, mostly people, some people in the White House, standing outside of the White House. Other people were coming up and taking pictures. If we wanted to do this, we'd do it through the basement, and we wouldn't let anybody take pictures. We, was, we had nothing to hide. Did you ever at any point deny any access from anyone in the national... from NARA or from the DOJ or the FBI access? Because in June, there were... My understanding is the DOJ, they, the FBI guys were here, and they saw a remaining 10 boxes, which they ended up taking in the raid. And a couple of days later, they asked you and your team to put a padlock on it. And yeah. that day, were they free to take those documents with them? Was there any disagreement about yeah, that? Yeah, you said access. I'm not sure they asked for access, per se. I they thought, were shown the I boxes. I thought we were having a very good conversation. Even when they went downstairs, the attorneys went downstairs, showed them the room, showed them the boxes. I thought it was a very routine thing. And again, if you look at the law or the act or whatever, the Presidential Records Act, it basically said everything that we were doing, we should be doing. We can talk to them. Now, when they're here, we could do lots of things. We, I think we had good security. We had, as you know, we had tremendous Secret Service. They are unbelievable people. And they're all over Mar-a-Lago, as happens to a former president, et cetera, et cetera. I hate to use the word former because I have a lot of problems with what happened. <laughs> but the fact is, and we wouldn't be having all these problems that we have right now, by the way, with Ukraine and Russia talking about nuclear weapons now. I want to get to all And this. all of that, because what's happening in the world is horrible. But uh, we had good discussions. As per the whole Records Act, Presidential Records Act, and then all of a sudden, we were surprised. I was very surprised. By the way, if we don't have good discussions, if you can't agree with them, there's like a process that you go through, and I think that the president predominates in the end. Mm -hmm. It's his choice in the end. Let me stop here. I started this, this show with a monologue. Yeah. In that monologue, I pointed out Hillary Clinton, which is, the, I guess, the closest case in modern history that this mirrors your case, except hers were electronic. And you heard Jim Comey, I just played it, you know, top secret classified information on her server. Think right. of, 
all these email chains. Then we have the deleted emails, the bleach pit of the other 33,000 emails, mm -hmm. um, the hammers, the devices, the SIM cards, all those things that I mentioned. Right. So we have a similar case. And then you heard James Comey say, no prosecutor would ever prosecute. But they're threatening to prosecute you. What is the difference between what you're describing with having, they found apparently 101 uh, top uh, classified documents in the boxes that they found. They found 11,000 pages that weren't classified that but you, you had. you don't know what they found because they wouldn't let any representative, they had our lawyers, it was 100 degrees out, they had our lawyers standing outside, not even allowing them into a building where they had air conditioning. It's a big complex. And you had 100, you had a lot of people here, I don't know how many, but you had a lot of people. They wouldn't let anyone inside. And, you know, if you look at NARA and if you look at the FBI over the last 10, 15 years, and if you look at all of the things at the Justice Department, what's taken place, when you look at what took place with the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, Sean, they spied on my campaign. What could be worse? Could you imagine, take Obama, if we spied on his campaign? It would probably be death sentence. They oh. spied on my campaign even when I was in the White House. And who would think that this is possible? But they spied. So, you know, we're not dealing with a lot of trust here, and the public isn't either. The American public is really angry. So then this. Uh, this is a big part of what I want to get into, and that is, okay, I mentioned, for example, 33,000 deleted emails. We talked about Hunter Biden's laptop. We talked about in that laptop, Joe Biden is implicated many times by his own son. Oh, he, did, he didn't want to pay all of dad's bills. Right. He didn't want to pay for his repairs. The big guy gets his cut. Tony Bobolinsky confirmed the big guy is Joe Biden. He met with, we now know, about 14 of the foreign business partners, which means he lied during the campaign. Uh, you don't see anything happen there. For three Nothing, years... Nothing's going to happen there. I don't believe so anything. So do we have equal justice no, in this we don't, country? And it's very unfair. It's a very unfair situation. Uh, you mentioned the word prosecute. I don't think prosecute. I don't think this is prosecutable. Under the Presidential Records Act, there's no retribution or prosecution. You're supposed to negotiate. We're talking about documents. We're talking about documents that actually are being watched over to a certain extent, and I would say to a large extent by the Secret Service, if you think about it. But I can't imagine... The word pro you mentioned the word prosecution. I don't hear the word prosecution. No, I'm saying they didn't prosecute them. No, no, but I don't see how they could prosecute me. But how the, do you prosecute somebody? But, but they didn't raid their homes. No, they, they raided this. They home. certainly didn't raid their homes. They certainly didn't raid their well, homes. And when Hillary broke them up, broke up all her phones with the hammers, and they did the bleach pit. All the things that happened were incredible. Well, you could also say 33 million documents or pages with President Obama. That's very questionable. 33 million, not 33,000, happens to be a similar number. 33 million, they're fighting over them or arguing over them. The problem that you have is they go into rooms, they won't let anybody near them. They wouldn't even let them in the same building. Did they drop anything into those piles? Or did they do it later? Wait. There's no chain of custody here with them. Wouldn't that be on videotape, potentially? I, no, I don't think so. I mean, it, they're in a room. Okay, so let me ask you this question, because I, I think this is the next logical question. Because the president of the United States, you, unlike, say, Hillary Clinton in her case, right. a president has the power to declassify. Correct. Okay. You had said on Truth Social a number of times you did de declassify. I did declassify, yes. Okay. W is there a process? What was your process to declassify? It doesn't have to be a process, as no. I understand it. it. You know, there's different... People say different right. things. But as I understand, there doesn't have to be... If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. Because you're sending it to Mar-a-Lago or to wherever you're sending it. And there doesn't have to be a process. There can be a process, but there doesn't have to be. You're the president. You make that decision. So when you send it... It's declassified. We... I declassified everything. Now, I declassified things, and we were having a lot of problems with NARA. You know, NARA uh, is a radical left group of people running that thing, and when you send documents over there, I would say there's a very good chance that a lot of those documents will never be seen again. There's also a lot of speculation because of what they did, the severity of the FBI coming and raiding Mar-a-Lago. Were they looking for the Hillary Clinton emails that were deleted, but they are around someplace? 
Were they looking for the well, wait, spying you're not or saying chunks? you had it? Did, did no, no. They may be saying they no. may have thought that it was in did. there. Okay. And a lot of people said the only thing that would give the kind of severity that they showed by actually coming in and raiding with many, many people is the Hillary Clinton deal, the Russia, Russia, Russia stuff, or, I mean, there are, there are a number of things, the spying on Trump's campaign. So they spied on my campaign. So why did they come in and do that? Especially since we were having such great conversations, John. All right, so let me, let me go. You mentioned Russia a number of times. Let's talk about that. Andrew McCabe, deputy FBI director, yeah. famously said, without Hillary's bought and paid for dossier, now remember, she used her money and right. DNC money. She funneled it to a law firm. Law firm hires Fusion GPS, an op research firm. This is in 2016. They then hire Christopher Steele, former MI6. Christopher Steele's main source is a guy by the name of Dan Schenko. Right. He's now on trial for lying to the FBI. We know, and we've been able to confirm and report it, widely believed. First of all, the, the media, you all got it wrong on the Russia issue. My show got it right. Pulitzer Prizes should yeah. be returned. I'll take they one. have. They are 100% yeah. wrong. They got it wrong. They got it wrong. And the, this is important because this, this dragged this country through hell for three years. And I am with us ensemble cast. We, I think you were watching some of the coverage. So my my next question is, if in fact they couldn't get the do, they couldn't get the FISA warrant according to Andrew McCabe without Hillary's dossier, they ruined Carter Page's life. And then, because of his connection to you, that was a backdoor to your campaign, your transition team, and your presidency. Here's my question. Danchenko was the source for Christopher Steele. Mm -hmm. He told the FBI in January of 2017 that, in fact, it was all total BS, bar talk, not true, none of it. And a few months later, he's on the FBI's payroll. Yep. And yet, they used his words as the source to spy on you as a president and candidate. He was on the payroll, and another very high up in the FBI right. was working with the Mueller campaign. Think of this, with the Mueller witch hunt, another one of the witch hunts. At least, I tell you what, we've shown the people of this country there is such corruption, whether it be elections, whether it be open borders, whether it be the kind of things we're talking about right now, the corruption is unbelievable. They have a high man in the FBI, and I think they just perk walked him out of the building a couple of weeks ago, right, when they found it, that they were paying. He was in charge of, think of this, he was in charge of, for Mueller, for the Mueller group of 18 radical left Democrat haters who said no collusion. There was no collusion after two years. But he was in charge. He worked for the FBI. They walked him out of the building. They walked him out. They got rid of him. How is that fair to me? So when somebody says, like, uh, you're not very trusting of the FBI, there have to be changes made, John, because our country is sick. Our country has so many problems right now. Our well, country I is sick. We, we, we really have a country that's going downhill, and it's going downhill. You know, I say I have when, to I get give, to when I give rallies, I'll say we have a failing country, but I say we have a, we have a country in decline. It's I a watched country your, in decline. your rally in Ohio. Yeah. I watched the one in Pennsylvania. And I want to ask you about that. This is the last question on this topic. And that was in court yesterday. And yeah. It was about the issue of whether or not you, you can declassify. First of all, I don't know why, why did anyone, why did you approve a special master that signed one of the FISA warrants? That was surprising. Well, the lawyers had a lot of... I, I didn't know any of the people involved. Oh. Um, but, you know, if you look at it, he was stung badly by that because the FBI lied to him and the people in the Justice Department lied to him. All right. So if you think about it, yes, he approved it, and he got stung very, very badly by that. So, you know, we'll so see. So your lawyers I, argued yesterday man. that they need to see the documents to be able to answer whether de they were declassified or not. And the special master is saying, well, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. Who's right? Well, I think the lawyers, uh, you know, are saying something. But I declassified the documents when they left the White House. In other words, when they left the White House, they were declassified.